Don't or double beam operation in spectrophotometry. Why we are using uh, double beam spectrophotometer in most of the uh, spectrophotometric studies? In order to understand the importance of double beam spectrophotometric studies, let us first understand how the absorption is taken out for a sample. Right. So let us understand that uh, you have a sample holder that is a qubit, normally known as qubit in spectrophotometry, spectrophotometer, and you want to determine the concentration of a protein sample. Present here. And you want to determine the concentration, one of the application of the spectrophotometer is the determination of concentration, uh, that is quantitative analysis of sample, quantity, you can measure the concentration of sample. Say we are taking a protein solution into it, we are taking a protein solution, say we are taking bovine serum albumin into the sample and we have added uh, bovine serum albumin is present in a sample of water in a sample of water. So water is acting as a solvent. We can also add something into the water which can interact with the protein molecule like uh, for example, uh, we basically determine protein uh, concentration by using Laudi, uh, Laudi method. So protein estimation by polyne Laudi method is there, protein estimation by uh, bioet method is there. So we can add any of the reagent into it to get the color. So more the protein, more the protein, uh, the greater the concentration of the protein, the protein will able to interact with the agent, the loud agent here, or the bioet reagent, or in case of Bradford method, some another agent can be used. So they interact, the protein interact with the agent to form the colored compound. So now we are passing a light to the sample. So that is always I0, the I0 is always 100%. I0 is the intensity of the incident light, that is the intensity which is 100% actually, it is the 100%. And the after getting absorption by the BSA molecule and water and Lowry agent, the light that is coming out from the suspension is denoted by I and it is known as the transmitted light. So say protein is absorbing 25%, protein is absorbing the solution of protein is absorbing 25%, then definitely the transmitted light will be 75%. So this is the normal uh, matter uh, when you are applying some agent into a sample and transferring light into the uh, through the sample. But uh, if you want to actually determine the concentration of the protein, what you need, you need to eliminate these uh, two molecules because not only the BSA but also water and loud agent is absorbing the sample. That means whenever you are getting 25% absorbance of the incident light, actually this 25% absorbance is due to the presence of not only the BSA but also the water molecule may absorb in some cases the loud agent may absorb also in the in the uh, in the, uh, uh, the, 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 the loud agent may also absorb the incident light. And that is why you need to eliminate these two things. You need to actually measure what is the actual absorbance made by the bovine serum albumin. And in order to do that, you have to take a blank solution. So what is a blank? A blank means it contains all the things, it contains all the things except the protein. That means it is made up of water, definitely it is made up of water that is a solvent, uh, sorry this is a water say and you are adding loud reagent into the sample also but no protein is present. So this is actually known as the blank solution. So we are dealing with the blank, blank. this is called blank and this it was initially it was sample. So we have to make a blank solution in that case the if the I0 is 100%, I0 is always 100%, I0 means the intensity of the incident light which is always 100%. You can uh, actually check the what is the value of the I here. The I, is, I will be definitely greater than 75%. It should be maybe, uh, maybe it, it may be uh, say 88%. It may be say 88%. That means the molecule that is water and Lowry reagent is actually absorbing 12%. So from this data, what we can actually uh, do, say the uh, OD of the blank was uh, say 0 0.2 and the OD of the sample, OD of your sample is say 0 0.5, OD of your sample is 0 0.5, so the net OD of the BSA, net OD of the BSA will be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2 that is equal to 0 0.3. So actually the net concentration of protein uh, net OD of the protein is 0 0.3. So this is very practically uh, we all all do whenever we are taking uh, some data in spectrophotometer. 
we are taking some OD inspector photometer, we have to always use a blank sample. It is true for whenever you are measuring uh, the bacterial growth experiment or the determination of concentration of protein or whatever is the determination of concentration of DNA, RNA, etc. So this is basically applicable for all spectrometric photometric studies. We have to take both blank and both sample and you have to, uh, the value of blank and the value of sample will be uh, measured simultaneously and after uh, after removing the value of the blank actually we can get the actual value of the sample so now uh, say voltage is getting fluctuated so when uh, we are uh, getting the value of blank say blank is 0.2 od and uh, when we are transferring the sample into the spectrophotometer in that case the voltage is fluctuated the voltage decreases from the actual volt say in that case the OD value may differ. So this is a basic problem in spectrophotometer. That means whenever you are taking a sample that is known as a blank and whenever we are taking blank and you get the OD that is the actual OD of the blank and now we are um, taking a sample into the to check the OD or what is the OD of the sample. In that case if voltage fluctuation may occur both in positive or in negative direction the OD value will the OD value may differ also. And this is the reason why what we need, we need double beam spectrophotometer. That means simultaneously we are transferring the uh, light uh, through the blank and through the sample. So this is the importance of the double beam spectrophotometer. Voltage fluctuation is a, this is this is the line. Voltage fluctuation inducing fluctuation to the voltage fluctuation in uh, voltage fluctuation inducing fluctuation in the source intensity can cause large cell scale error in spectrophotometer operation. So to over obviate uh, this situation, double beam spectrophotometers have been designed. So in case of double beam spectrometer, what we normally do, we are using the same light source. Say if we are dealing with the BSA that is a protein, then you need to transfer uh, to 80 nanometer. Normally protein absorbs at 20 nanometer, but we are whenever we are applying uh, some agent into it, say uh, by red or, or maybe loudy. In that case, the absorption. Uh, the absorption maximum may differ. Uh, in that case, we should use the specific amount of light. It may be the UV light or sorry, it may be the UV light or it may be the visible light. So whenever you are using the light, we have to use the monochromator. For example, you are using UV light. So the range of the UV is 180 to 400 nanometer. If you are using visible light, the range of visible radiation is uh, 400 to 70 nanometer. So say we are using a protein solution, we are taking a protein solution here, BSA solution here and all, and the simple water is present uh, in the form of plant. So we are transferring, uh, we are using uh, UV light there, UV light may absorb, uh, UV light may emit radiation in the region of 180 to 400 nanometer and now we need to transfer only to 80 nanometer because protein absorbs maximally at 20 nanometer. So we have to use monochromator, monochromator converts this polychromatic light into monochromatic light. That means the polychromatic light say 180 plus 181 plus 182, 183, 184, 185, each and every weapon is passing uh, through the monochromator and because we are commanding monochromator to 280, that means monochromatic will transfer only the 280 nanometer wavelength through the sample and through the blank but not other wavelength. So there is a chopper. Now there is a chopper. This is the most important or vital part of the double beam spectrophotometer. This chopper will rotate arbitrarily, and that is why, in at a time, it transfers the light uh, to the, through the sample, and via reflecting the mirror, it is also transferring the light through the blank. So at a time, you are getting two deep data: one from the blank, one from the sample, and then uh, the transmitted light is coming. Uh, that is the trans uh, the, the, the transmitted light that is coming out from the sample, and the transmitted light that is coming out from the blank will reflect to the mirror and ultimately photomultiplier is there which is a detector which detects what is the OD of the blank and what is the OD of the sample. So in that case if voltage fluctuates in a negative direction then the OD value of both blank and sample will decrease. In that case uh, the total OD will not uh, alter the total there will be actual, actual value of OD and if the voltage fluctuation occurs in such a way that the voltage increases in that case the OD value of the blank and OD value of the sample may increase simultaneously. In that case whenever uh, we are uh, eliminating the value of blank from the value of sample. In that case, the OD value may not differ. The OD value may remain as it is. 
So that is the importance of the double wing spectrophotometer. That means double wing spectrophotometer, uh, whatever is using, we use two same wavelength. Double beam means two. Double means two, and beam means the beam of light. And the two wavelength of the light is same. Here we are not using two different wavelength of light. Uh, we are using only two light of same wavelength. One is passing from the blank, and one is passing from the sample simultaneously. So in, in each case, if voltage fluctuation may occur. Uh, there will be no fluctuation in the value of pole. So this is the actual importance of double wing spectrophotometer.